I looked at the clip and I was like, wow. Yep. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, this gentleman, and I showed it to Toya, who's, you know, AKA my manager. She was like, oh no, you better find a way to honor him. You better find a way. He's like, the male of what you're doing. Like, it was so amazing. Like, see, he, he's excited. <laughs> and it's amazing that he did that, the young man behind the screen, because he deals with the youth, if you will, helping youth turn it around. And um, I'm not going to go any further. I do this a lot at events. I'm not here to promote. So I want Tr Trisha, come here, baby girl. I don't even know her. Like, literally, she hit me up and was like, listen, you need, that's what you saw a posture. Like, listen, you need to watch this, sister. And I watched it, I forwarded the story, she's like, you better make it happen. And she was promoting this individual and we were floored where we literally don't have, I'm not lying, we don't even have the award. We had to order it because that's how close it was to the event where she actually just asked us to watch. This is why closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> She was like, listen, watch it. Whatever you do with it, watch it. And we was like, you know what? We're definitely going to make it I just wanted to say this morning, up to this morning, I got a phone call from a mother. Uh, and she said that her son, her 18-year-old son, has been li you know, running around the streets. And, you know, he recently was shot. And she called me in tears because she said her son spoke to Shanduk. And she said she didn't know what he said or what he did, but he, t he called her right after and said, Mom, I'm ready to change my life. Mm. And this is something that I witness all the time with him. Honored to be your senior advisor, Shanduk McFadder. Congratulations. Yeah, um, it's hard. Thank you. Um, wow. Give me a second, I'm getting together. See, the thing with me is I'm just using my, my, my number being called. 06R4713. All right, here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm used to. Um, now, I came up in a single parent home. Actually, my mother's right there. And my mother did everything that she possibly could to raise us with honor, respect, principles, codes, and everything that she could possibly do as a, a single mother raising five children in Brooklyn, New York. I love you, Mom. I love you too. The problem was the community. It's hard as a parent to raise a child and tell them this, that, this, and that, and then when they go outside into our communities, the numbers on the outside heavily outweigh the numbers on the inside. Yes, sir. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, Mom. You're one person. I got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people telling me that this is what I want to do. And eventually, um, at the young age, when I probably was about 11 years old, my, younger, my older brother, my only mentor went to prison. He went, actually went to Sparford, which is juvenile, at the age of 13. So at the age of 13, the only mentor, male mentor that I had was gone. So I fell deeper and deeper into the streets. And doing anything that I wanted to do, everything that I wanted to do. And my mother was still trying. She was trying. I mean, I come home and she's ready with that belt. I love that, like, oh snap, this doesn't hurt anymore. Guess what, it's over now. What else can you do, huh? I'm gone, I'm, I'm, I'm with the wind into the streets. And by the age of 16, I was incarcerated on my way to Rikers Island, the world famous Rikers Island. And let me tell you how bad that was, how, how messed up I was at that time. I wanted to go. <laughs> when I hit Rikers Island, what we had was so many gangs on Rikers Island. And shortly thereafter, I, I, I became acquainted with the New York City Bloods. And we fought for a name. We fought in the prison system. We cut, we stabbed, we did everything we could to say we would not be oppressed. And then once we got the numbers, once we got the strength, once we got the power, we became those same oppressors. 
and I'll, I'll continue to do it for years and years. I used to wake up, roll my weed. I don't smoke anymore, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Grab my gun and go outside. I'm ready for my day. I got dimes. I was selling crap. I was selling weed. I was robbing people. And, and, and the thing about me was I was only robbing white people, so I was correct for doing that, right? They got the money. They robbed the white people. Yeah, that's what they said, but um, it was giving me more time than the white people. I got to stop this. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I continue with this. And in the midst of me doing this, I've, I've lost control of myself. I believe that this was the life that I was supposed to live. Because my mother always tell me certain things about how, how she try to keep a certain company away from me. And I used to tell her that. It wasn't the friends, mom, it was me. I wanted that for myself. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I wanted that for myself, but I wanted that for myself. So as my life progressed, one day I was walking through the yard with a gentleman who was a mentor. And as we were in the yard, his son came up to him. And this man had been in jail for many years. And when his son came up to him, I said, oh no. My sons are now 14 year old twin boys. I said, it's not going to happen. And I made that change. And I started an organization. The name of my organization is called Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes. That is a lifestyle. That is a way of life that has been embedded into our communities for so many years. I concur with the fact that we have mental illnesses going on. I concur with all of the things that that brother said. I found my disease, and then I found my cure. And now I continue to do that work. And the ironic thing about this is just the other day, I was at a meeting. We have a new Brooklyn Borough President, Eric Adams. Just give him a hand, man. Black. And, and, and what happened was the brother, I gotta wrap it up soon, you know, but um, the brother told me to come meet with him. I met with him, we talked. And later on, I got a call from his office and said, Eric Adams appointed you to his youth transition committee uh -oh. and his public safety committee. Uh -huh. Right, and what happened was, they made me wrap it up, you know, I, yeah, I'm ready to keep going, but I sat in a, in, 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 in a, in a meeting with police officers, prosecutors, people that I was on the other side of the, the, you know, they were my enemy. And I seen a whole different, seen how I could help them understand our communities better, to save our children without sending them to the prison system. And without knowing what I was doing, I was already following a pattern that was set by brothers like A.T. Mitchell. And what we want to do is get that same message out every single time we hit these streets. Just like Trisha said, save a life one day at a time, one person at a time. So if we can have brothers like A.T., like Tony Watt, who's out there in the street, Tony Herbert, myself, and people of strong leadership, make a change and say we will stand up and not have our children die anymore, we're going to make some serious changes. Thank you.